Hello, this is Marlene Byrne with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching Video Voters Guide. We are in the studios of Metro East to talk with candidates running in the November 2018 general election. We have invited all candidates who filed for this race. There are many reasons during this busy campaign season for candidates being able to accept or unable to appear. With me today is Paul Wilcox, running for Trout Tail City Council Position 5, who was able to accept our invitation. We are sorry the other candidates in this race, Nick Moon and Deb Becker, have been unable to accept our invitation. We urge voters to visit the League of Women Voters website and to use the League's vote411.org site for comprehensive coverage, where candidates may also choose to include more information and include their own YouTube videos. And now for some questions. Uh, for the Troutdale City Council position five, what specifically would you do to improve cooperation, collaboration, and integrity in the City Council? Okay. Uh, first, I want to thank the women voters for providing this service. Um, I know you've sponsored debates in the past, but since we have so few candidates for Charlton City Council this year, uh, probably wouldn't be worth the trouble. Uh, as far as your question, um, I had that question presented to me earlier in a written format, and I did respond. Uh, that's Difficult to address. <laughs> uh, the, the last part, uh, the word integrity in particular, um, I think integrity, you either have it or you don't, so I don't know how to encourage that. Uh, as far as collaboration and cooperation, um, I'd like to use an example of how, I don't know if this is directly what you're asking for, but an example of how uh, decisions are made and implemented from what I've seen in, in the Troutdale City Council. Uh, they had a case a couple years back, so it's not the entire current council that was involved, but uh, they had a case before them uh, presented by Public Works where they were trying to do away with uh, what was referred to as the um, rate cap on the storm sewer rates. And this had gone, this went back probably 20 plus years because nobody on the council uh, knew how it originated. But what it amounted to was uh, no matter how large uh, a property's impermeable uh, surface area was, you know, such as a parking lot or a roof, uh, the rate cap was set at uh, the equivalent of six residential units. So, you know, somebody like FedEx was paying the same runoff rate as six homes in the city. And um, so, they went ahead and at first they started out um, phasing it out. So it was the cap was like $25, which was six homes. Then they doubled it to 50. Well, the problem with that is um, FedEx's current rate is 4,000 a month. So to get to 4,000 by doubling 25 to 50 to 100 to 200 to 400 would take many years. <laughs> So, so eventually they just, uh, you know, did away with it entirely. You know, <laughs> you know, the public works guy talked to FedEx and they said they not, had no problem with it whatsoever. So um, what I'm getting at, I guess, is um, I'm not big on incremental changes when something so obvious needs to be corrected. And they had a uh, similar situation with the gas tax well, they hired a uh, consultant who had recommended a five cent increase for the local fuel tax, and uh, they ended up um, kind of compromising by phasing it in one penny at a time. So the first year was one cent, second year two cents, three, second year three cents. But they never did get to five cents because right okay. now it's capped at three cents. So um, I, I just question incremental changes when something kind of bold needs to be done. Okay. All right, and our next question. What ideas do you have for dealing with the homeless population so in need uh, of social services today? Okay, this was an issue before the counselors two years ago. So, 
probably not much has changed or it's gotten worse. Uh, one thing I did want to uh, bring to people's attention is there was a uh, recent ruling that just came out uh, the first week of September from the Ninth District Court in San Francisco. It was a uh, suit brought against the city of Boise, Idaho, where they had a uh, no camping ordinance, essentially. And the uh, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that, um, well, they essentially said if there were no shelter beds available, the sleeping outdoors couldn't be, they couldn't be cited for. So that's going to have an effect on, you know, all the western states that uh, where that uh, decision applies to. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, I want to mention we had a uh, local resident come to a uh, council meeting recently, and she was very concerned with the, uh, the homeless population kind of invading Troutdale neighborhoods. And I, I've heard reports from the uh, city staff where they're sleeping in the abandoned buildings in the urban renewal site, which is in the process of being demolished. Uh, people are creating encampments in the green spaces, not so much in the public parks, because public parks can be enforced because they have uh, time restrictions when you can be there. But, uh, you know, like I say, that, that circuit court decision is going to really restrict what cities can do. And um, I also wanted to mention the the range of uh, homeless people, the variety, you know, each needs to be addressed differently. Uh, for example, I, I hear that um, affordable housing is an issue. I mean, some of these people don't have an income <laughs> to get into an apartment. So that's, you know, that's one, just one aspect of it. You've got people with drug and alcohol and mental health issues and, and you know, at the other end of the spectrum, there's people that choose that lifestyle. So they, each individual uh, facet needs to be addressed individually. And, and I, there's, I don't see an individual counselor or, or a city council, you know, being able to address that. They're more qualified people than any of us that haven't been able to fix it. That's true. Our next question, how would you strengthen the council's working relationships with surrounding uh, jurisdictions such on such issues as transportation, policing, social services, and the community and the economy. Okay. Uh, there was an interesting issue raised uh, just recently by uh, Mayor Tosterod in Fairview, where he was trying to get the three cities and, and possibly Gresham also to uh, create a uh, plastic bag uh, ban, you know, the, the one use bags like mm -hmm. you get in Fred Meyer. Safeway, Albertsons, Target, et cetera. Um, apparently, Wood Village and Fairview are working together on that. Um, Troutdale doesn't seem to be participating. <laughs> but that's, that's the sort of thing, you know, a regional, uh, a regional approach to uh, something so that your, the cities aren't um, you know, disadvantaging one city over another, you know, somebody they might shop elsewhere so they can get their plastic bags. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being with us and answering all these questions for us. Okay. And uh, I want to tell you, this is the voters Video Voter's Guide, and thank you for being with us and watching. The general election is Tuesday, November 6th. Be sure to inform yourself of the candidates and the ballot measures and exercise your right to vote. <laughs>